here we go. This article's three days old, but I want to dig into it because it's pretty huge. Pretty big deal. This says, this is from um, ABC, from 10 News San Diego. The title of the article is, States Have Authority to Fine or Jail People Who Refuse Coronavirus Vaccine, Attorney Says. Legal precedent dates back to 1905. So, let's get into it. This is by Derek Stahl of ABC News. All right. As drug makers race to develop a vaccine against the coronavirus, several legal questions are emerging. Could the government require people to get it? Could people who refuse to roll up their sleeves get banned from stores or lose their jobs? The short answer is yes, according to Dov Vox, a law professor and director of the Center for Health Law Policy and Bioethics at University of San Diego. He says, states can compel vaccinations in more or less intrusive ways. They can limit access to schools or services or jobs if people don't get vaccinated. They could force them to pay a fine or even lock them in jail. Fox noted authorities in the United States have never attempted to jail people for refusing to vaccinate, but other countries like France have adopted the aggressive tactic. The legal precedent dates back to 1905 in a landmark U.S. Supreme Court case Jacobson v. Massachusetts. The court ruled Massachusetts had the authority to fine people who refused vaccinations for smallpox. That case formed the legal basis for vaccine requirements at schools and has been upheld in subsequent decisions. Courts have found that when medical necessity requires it, the public health outweighs individual rights and liberties. In 2019, New York City passed an ordinance that fined people who refused a measles vaccination. That said, recent protests over face coverings show there will be significant backlash to vaccine mandate. To a vaccine mandate. Just because states have the power to do it doesn't mean it's the best public policy. Although states would have the authority to mandate vaccinations, there's more doubt about whether Congress could enact a federal requirement. The most likely federal vaccination requirement would come in the form of a tax penalty, but, Fox said, given the current composition of the Supreme Court, a federal vaccine requirement would likely be found unconstitutional. Opponents of a federal mandate would cite the Supreme Court's 2012 decision, the Affordable Care Act. In that case, the justices ruled that Congress could not use its powers to regulate interstate commerce commerce to require people to buy health insurance, even though the ACA's individual mandate was ultimately upheld on separate grounds. That means the U.S. could have a patchwork of different vaccine requirements in different states. States that explore a vaccine requirement should only do so if the vaccine is widely and readily available, Fox said. Otherwise, you create an underclass of people who are less safe and without access to the basic means of society. States would need to allow exemptions for people with legitimate medical risk. Okay, okay. You get the idea. Um, here's what I think about this. Okay. Uh, look. This isn't what they said it was going to be. Okay? It's nowhere near as detrimental as they originally predicted... It's not the measles, it's not the mumps, it's not polio, it's not even the Spanish flu, which everyone likes to compare it to. Um, I won't be getting the vaccine, and my kids will not be getting the vaccine, and we're not like, we're not like anti-vaxxers, okay? We got all the vaccines that schools require the kids to have. Um, when I was a kid, I was immunized before I went to school, and that's not us. We're not like, oh, we're against vaccines. We're not like that, okay? 
So I don't want it to come off as like an anti-vaxxer. Not an anti-vaxxer, but when this thing starts, when this thing comes out, it's going to be new. It's going to be a brand new thing. Um, it's not going to be as tested and proven as all these other vaccines w that we've had for years. And we know that they work through years and years of testing and seeing it work on society. You know, it's like, I don't get the flu vaccine. Okay, I take my chances with the flu. I've never had a flu vaccine, and I've probably only caught the flu maybe three or four times in my life that I can remember. Um, and it sucks, but it's not... I, I don't think that getting the flu vaccine would have saved me those couple times in my entire life, because plenty of people who get the vaccine still end up contracting it. So, uh, it's just... Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not ready to subject myself and my kids to something that's new and relatively, you know, compared to these other vaccines that we've had forever, new, unproven, untested, you know. Um, I'm not going to inject a foreign substance into my body to comply with the law, you know, or, or do it to my kids to comply with a law that ultimately violate civil rights and should be proven unconstitutional pretty easily. Just because there's a precedent for it, um, just because they've done it before or versions of it before, doesn't mean that it can't be overturned. That shit can be overturned like that. Um, look, I'll wear a mask. I will social distance I will sanitize myself, my environment, regularly. I will avoid going out in public as much as possible, if that's necessary. But I will not be, be getting a vaccine. No way. 